Dr. John. Welcome back. How are you, buddy? Great. Thanks, Dale. Appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. everybody. Sounds like an awesome community. Just the uh, the right type, I think, for anybody who wants to uh, to have just that, a community. So that's exciting. Good job, guys. And you know what, John? You know what's interesting? Um, we're, we bring in people outside of our business model, like you, um, to uh, give you visibility to our community because we're not afraid of losing a subscriber if they find a better, something that suits them better. And, um, you know, I challenge uh, all of my guests to try and find another company that lets others promote and, uh, you know, have this type of visibility with their own community. Usually you'd have to, you'd have to be like Steve McQueen and jump over a wired fence to get okay. into someone else's community. Don't you think? Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great thing. So, um, yeah, and I'm really happy that you guys have me here. And uh, yeah. sorry for the Twitter thing. I'm kind of I'm kind of done with Twitter, Dale. OK, that's what happened. Because. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. I'm done. I'm done. It's okay. just so exhausting. It's so exhausting. It, it is. It, it is. Uh, so many yeah. so many changes since uh, um, Elon, you know, took over. It's just like, where, where are we going? What's happening here? Yeah. I, yeah. So, uh, okay. Do you miss, uh, do you miss it as it, uh, no. I mean, I know you don't miss it. Are you involved in any, any other social media where people really. can follow you? Not right now. I mean, if anybody wants to check out my website, I mean, you can kind of check that out. I mean, I write a newsletter still. Yeah. So, okay. You, know, uh, you can, you can follow me there if you want, um, or just check, you know, from time to time, you know, if, if you have me on like that type of thing. So, okay. but, uh, the big thing that, that I've been looking at is so what do you think about you know, I didn't tune in a little bit earlier, but what, what are you thinking about these, uh, these all time highs? Does it, does it feel frothy up here? Or like, do you think this thing could keep going? You know, I know some guys that, uh, have not been bearish for a long time that are extremely bearish. Looking that are bearish a, now. Yeah. That are looking for a C wave down here. This is the most bearish yeah. guy. I now to me, this looks like drive two as well. But it, sometimes you don't need three. But anyway, this guy's an Elliotician, and he's saying that this uh, this is ending a B, and we're going to get a C. It could be. Yeah, this could be an expanded flat here. So in yeah. other words, what we got is, if you can see my screen, I've got yeah. this is a possible zigzag down, right? So you kind of have this A, B, C move, right? So yeah. it's very impulsive on the way down. And I think this probably sucked in a lot of bears, or at least got some, you April. know. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it was really like, so obviously this huge wave up here since October was just, just massive. Right? right. And so now like we're starting to get like, I mean, we're not really seeing a lot of these bed heads coming out and saying like, yeah, we're going to cut rates. You know, the most of them are saying like, we might even still raise rates. Right. That's it. So the market yeah. I think, is getting a little bit sketchy here. And if this yeah. isn't ABC, right. So you have this a, it, it's called an expanded flat. So it pushed above, it basically sucks in the longs over the last pivot. Cause it's an irregular. Exactly. And then and then you see kind of that wave down. Of course, that wave C could be any size. Uh, if anything, symmetry is what you'd look at, which means all we would do is is really ultimately just kind of kind of test these recent lows. And if that's it, then, you know, we're going back up after that. You know what I mean? No, so he, he's <laughs> talking thirty five hundred. Oh, oh, wow. That's that's huge. That's like you'd have to switch to like the here. Let's go to a uh, a monthly time frame if I can here. Oh, yeah, thirty five hundred and then a rally into the election. Oh, wow. When's it's, the election? Is it like November this year? It's always in November. Uh, so a rally into the election. And you know why it, I think this is possible? Because of my sister. OK, so here's my sister. She's got a nice 401k. <laughs> You know, uh, she's done well. She's in the market. And she said, well, Dale, what I'm planning to do is to get out of the market in October and get back into the market after the election. You and, you know, how I, and if she's thinking that, you know how many people are thinking that. I mean, so how, how can they trip people up is by having a severe decline well before October. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. then that, you know, what did Tyson say? Uh, it's a good plan till you get punched in the face. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Right. So <laughs> anyway, that this is what he's uh, looking for. 
I don't rule out maybe another push to 55, 5600 if we get some benign data. Um, well, and the, also, go I've ahead. Got the, I got the monthly chart pulled up here, and this yeah. pattern, right? This little uh, kind of like alligator type looking thing, is yeah. uh, is a, is what's called a bump and run. And so you can see here, this is all the way back from the Great Recession, right? And so right. Uh, here's COVID, right? And then yeah. this line just keeps on going. And so what we've seen here is the bump, right? And so again, as long as it holds this line, I mean, I guess bullish, right? Until proven out. I mean, obviously a move back down to, um, you know, 4,500 would would certainly affect some people. But as long yeah. as that line is held, then I, you know, I guess the trend is in place. But if it breaks down, um, you, we could start to see an accelerated move back to that line. And so that's the bump and run move. So, and that's uh, 3,500. Yeah. And then and that brings like, three. yeah, that, that, you know, depending on when it happens, let's say we go up a little bit here, we break down and then boom, there yeah. you go. 3,500. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Possible. All right. So, uh, you know, but I'm looking for, I'd like to see Amazon make one more high for a three driver. I, cause it was acting pretty weak. Um, you know, I just realized, um, you're interviewing me. You turn well, you turn mean, the you, know, you, well, you turn the tables on me, man. <laughs> but you may, you're much much more interesting to listen to. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, so one more high in Amazon, and I'm Amazon. going for it. Um, I don't know what you see, but uh, you know, I think we're going to go back and fill that gap minimum. So yeah, uh, yeah. That's, I mean. Amazon's just been such a tricky name now. Now, like, so you've got these names that are, you know, vulnerable. Like there was just a, uh, what is it, Stratigas or whatever just came out this morning and said, you know, there's still a 30% chance of a recession in 2024. And it's yeah. like, you know, these type of companies, like the Amazons, the people that are like selling stuff and delivering stuff and like, you know, affected by inflation, they're, they're, they're going to have, you know, potentially a little more issues if things do turn. But like, what about NVIDIA? Right. Is this thing ever going to turn back? I mean, I, I know yeah. we're going to get a stock split soon. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thirteen hundred. Yeah. I mean, very possible. I, I mean, we we were talking about a thousand last time we were here. There yeah. it is. Just, just yeah. gapped over it. Just One more gap, it. John. So here's my lesson in gaps. The first gap uh, that it left, uh, that must have been earnings, was a breakaway yeah. gap from that formation. Right. The second yeah. gap is a runaway gap. Yep. And the third gap will turn out to be exhaustion, exhaustion. gap. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. You exhaustion know this. Gap. Yeah. So yeah. So that'll be it. So that gets you to thirteen hundred, and then yeah. and then we're still hanging around a thousand, and then the split. How big is the split going to be? I'm sure everybody. Uh, knows. I I really I don't. Ten know. to one. Ten to one. So back down okay. to hundred. Or hundred. All right. Yeah, that'll they'll draw some people in. Oh God, I could get in for a hundred. Yeah. And then it'll go back to a thousand. So this was uh, a classic anyway. one. This was a classic one because if you guys remember, there was a there was a series of uh of stock splits that happened for a while there. Like this was like a year or so ago. And uh, everyone like was like had this like was running up and running up and running up, and then NVIDIA never really did anything. And then they did a stock split here. When was this? This was back in, yeah, 2021. So a couple of years ago. So they did a split, they ran up into it. And then the and then the, the market pulled back. And so I think around that time, didn't Amazon do its split after the market pulled back? It was oh, like- yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah. everyone was trying to, you know, uh, give people lower price levels. So exactly. they would be- Exactly, so yeah. there it was. There it was right there. And it was, it yeah. was when the market was pulling back and it turned yeah. out, that that split ended up being a pretty good dip buy for Amazon. So, but look it at was. you're right, you're right. We're right at these like crazy levels right now. So yeah, um, all it did was get back to where it was. So you know this could be also an irregular B up here with mm -hmm. a C to come. So yeah. anyway, that's my uh, Khalid is going to buy Nvidia puts at twelve fifty. There you go. Um, with uh, Nasdaq at new highs. Uh, what what do you think about uh, the huge move we've had in commodities, specifically silver shares, gold miners? Uh, yeah, let's take a look there at that. That's been a, that's been a really interesting one here too, right? Because that's like a, a big hedge against inflation, right? And so, I mean, here's silver breaking out over some major levels, and then yeah. uh, and then gold has had some pretty yeah. epic weeks. 
Let's see what we got, if we can get the chart up here. So, you know, I was reading some commentary from a trader friend yeah. of mine. Look at that. And Yeah, and he was saying last week, besides the miners, uh, we've had a big move in utilities. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. had a big move in staples. Basically, what he's saying is there is a big rotation into defensive sectors um last week did you notice that uh really honestly not i've just been mostly paying attention to this nasdaq stuff but like that would not surprise me at all just to get a little bit more position i mean think about it i mean like really i mean as a trader what do how, how long can we chase this thing right like i mean it, it, even you know, if I primarily you know focus on day trade action, but it's still you right. know fractal into your your daily right. charts and monthly charts. So I mean that's fine. But when I look at this as a chart, like do I really want to go along here? You know, like and same thing with the uh, you know same thing with the uh, everybody's got different philosophies on the whole thing. But it's just like when these things get so extended, it's just like hey, take some profit, right? It's okay. You know, nobody went broke taking profits, right? And so unless unless you took more like losses <laughs> along the way, right? But but as yeah. long as you're taking profits, right? I mean, I mean, that's fine, right? So I mean, you know, keep an eye on the sectors, make sure they're moving in your direction, make sure the setup is good. And and really honestly, like Dale, that's kind of what I wanted to just chime in about today is just like it kind of taking a step away from the charts and just talking a little bit, a little bit about like the, the trader mentality. Oh, this is actually, it was like a nice cup and handle pattern here too, by the way. Just yeah. To, on gold. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So here's my trader mentality right now. You know, I'm scalping, I'm trading, but for like swing and intermediate term stuff, um, what I have is a shopping list for yeah. if and when, yeah. We get a big swoosh to the downside and and miners are top on the list because a lot of them aren't even giving up gains. But I think there will be a pullback in miners because the majors like Barrick, mm -hmm. like Newmont, have not performed like the marginal producers, which when you get moves like this, they outperform. Right. Uh, but uh, I will buy anything that if you drop on your foot, it hurts on a swoosh to maybe we get a 50% pullback in GDX um, back to 31 or so. Right. So uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of my narrative and my trader cap uh, is, you know, if there is a sell off besides wanting to be, you know, in puts and things like that, what is the opportunity and the opportunity i think is in commodity related stocks i like it i like it yeah i mean the only thing that i can really you know offer here you know for the session is just like you know when we chase things you know if we chase things that are breaking out and we miss the breakout and we're chasing it it's it's a fear-based move right and i think it's important for traders to understand what they're doing and why and so um you know but if you're in if you're in that, I get this question all the time. And I sometimes I ask myself, it's like, how can I stay in this trade longer? Right. Be courageous, but don't be uh, uh, don't be reckless. Right. Like because that can blow things up really quickly. Right. So that that's the idea is that have a system in place for following these things when if you're in and they do break out. Right. Don't be afraid, that, you know, to uh, uh, to take profit if you met your guidelines. Right. And if you got a little bit left that you can you can run along with. Cool. But like a, um, like your friend was saying there, it's like, you know, there's no reason to run victory laps through these things. Right. It's like it, it's a personal every trade is a personal thing. Right. And so um, by taking that and, and trusting yourself and trusting your system and back testing it, it's really the best thing that a trader can do. And that's really just what I wanted to offer there uh, okay, today. Well, I, I, I want you to mentor me. So <laughs> I bought, OK, I bought the I bought the miners on the day they turned. And that was okay. the beginning of March. OK. And, uh, you know, things start getting overbought and this and the dollar was rallying. So I went to the door and left a lot of chips on the table. Mm -hmm. Tell me how I could sit when I've been waiting for a trade for a couple of years and I could only sit for a couple of weeks instead Ooh. of a couple of months. 
that's such a long time frame, Dale. And it's like, sometimes it's just like, have your levels, right? So like, what is the, so for which, uh, which uh, ticker do you want to look at in particular? And I'll show you a couple ideas. Uh, uh, FSM. All right, FSM. All right, let's take a look. I mean, really one of the big things that, and, and there's only so much we can do, right? I mean, if something flashes a big red candle for you that, you know, kind of scares you out of a position. So is this what you're talking about here, um, Dale? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So well, the last well, the last three months, like you were in for a couple of weeks, but the darn thing kept going. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, this is really it. You have to decide what your method is that's going to keep you in it, right? I mean, it looks really obvious after the fact, like all charts, right? Especially Elliott Wave. But like, yeah. right? One of the techniques that that I use is is just trailing by candle, right? And sometimes it can be brutal, right? Because like maybe you got here. Right. Maybe you got to this level right here and then this thing turns red and it takes you out. Well, is it more than you would have made if you got out halfway there? Sure. And that's where you have to that's where you have to have the discipline to be like, OK, what's my rule? Right. And then you can you can go down to the shorter term time frames. Right. So if we just go back here to the weekly chart, was there was there a shakeout candle on this one? And if no. it was bad. Is that, you know, I and I even said, you know, this could be the kind of move where you wait for a pullback that never comes. Yeah, and, so and, and it's okay. you just and have to have the happened. method. You have to have the method. You have to back Look test at that. it, right? and you have to trust it, right? Look and so that. here, right, yeah. So if you're involved here in April, right, well, yeah. what what candle is going to get you out of this thing? If you if you moved your stop here, well, you got more than halfway than your the original candle, so that's okay. That guy tagged you out, and this one got a little bit lower, and then it got red. Right. So so where is where's the breaking point? Right. And which which is the level that's going to get you. So sometimes we look at stuff like, well, you know, do we close below the last level? OK, right? you so see another, that consolidation there? Uh, yeah. That sideways. OK, yep. so I trade the physical, too. And gotcha. silver at that first one peaked at 30 and mm. pulled all the way back to 26 mm. Mm. And the share, I thought the shares would give back a lot more because they were underperforming for so long, but mm. they didn't do anything but move sideways during that. That was a pretty big pullback from 30 to 26 sure in, in the physical, but uh, the shares didn't give it up. Right, exactly. So, so one thing to look at, Dale, is like, all right, monthly chart still green, right? So it's like, hey, that the monthly yeah. chart's on my side, but that monthly chart could turn red and turn into a lot of suffering, right? So the real thing you can go is go shorter time frame, wait for a close below a level. So we'd ever close below a level here to get going. And then you can do like add a, add some uh, uh, bumper guards in here, right? So one of the ones we like to look at is the uh, uh, the exponential, right? That moving average. Okay. ADMA, All right. right? Go to your so ADMA. If, as long so as you stay to... above the ADMA, nice little Fibonacci, nice little Fibonacci number there too. As long as you're above that. Look at that. Never violated. Right? Never violated. Nice. Nice tool. You know what, John? You're oh. a good coach. You're a good coach. Hey, thanks, Dale. And so, like I said here, look, let's say this week, I mean, we've got a couple of days left, but if this week closed below that candle, that could be an exit. If it closed below the ADMA, maybe it's definitely a good exit. You see what happened down here? We closed below yeah. the ADMA and then it puked, right? And then, yeah. right? So just little things like that. If you can catch it, if you can catch that move, you got to have a system. Now go back. Now go back and go, okay, let's say, let's go back to the last breakout. Right. Let's go back to the last here. All right. Well, if, if this was my breakout thing, right, this is nasty. Yeah. Right. So so now it's like, hey, everything's going. I'm trailing by candle. And then doosh, that yeah. week happens. But you get like some sort of like, you know, earnings thing. So you got to pay attention to all that stuff. Is yeah. this stuff easy? No. But if you have a system and if the system doesn't work for you that one time and you still made a little bit of money and maybe you made more than if you were just keeping your fingers crossed. Well, that's better than it was. All right, John, show your website so that people that oh. have just people that have heard you now and listen to the recording later, since you're not on X anymore, know yeah. how to reach reach out to you. Yeah, let me go. Let's go to positive. Here, I'll share I'll share it here in a second. Let's see, positivetrans.com. And uh so you know, we'll we'll keep you in the rotation. You just have to look at uh well, you will you'll have the dates. So yeah, you don't exactly. need X to remind you. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, and you can always email me through the website or whatever here too. So it's a positive trends. We're, you know, we're doing, like I said, we're doing a lot less on Twitter now, um, starting to focus on, you know, 
maybe more coaching, a little more institutional type work, that type of thing. So, um, so yeah, so you can always check us here. You can always hit that contact button to reach out if you have questions. Again, I still do a newsletter and a morning newsletter, um, you know, a couple of things if you want to get involved and get some ideas out there, but um, um, that's kind of uh, what we got going on. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, John, it was great catching up with you. Yeah, man. Have a great day. And uh, uh, my trading warrior brother. Yeah. So <sighs> Dr. John Sinclair, my trading warrior brother, everybody. Appreciate Check him out. Check him out. Uh, as you could hear live, uh, I asked him to help me. Help me. I'm going to look at, uh, get a hold of him and maybe use that indicator to capitalize on my turning points instead Great. of making the, the tough money and awesome. leaving the, leaving the windfalls on the table. Appreciate okay, you guys. guys. Have a great weekend. You too, John. Okay. Thanks very yeah. much, bye. buddy. Bye. Bye. So bye. that's a wrap, everyone. Uh, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh, take advantage of that uh, sale. Uh, surround yourself with Blake and, and traders that are better than you, that you could learn from. And, you know, it's not only just better. How about even just not as good as you, but another pair of eyeballs that points you towards a market that you would not even be paying attention to. Um, that's a big benefit that I get uh, with the people I interact with during the market is they see things I don't see, which points my eye into that direction. And then I see how it lines up with my work. And if it's compelling, I go. So, Laura, have a great day today. Sinatra, everybody, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. We'll wrap up the week tomorrow. Dickie Matthews will be here. And the big number, trade it live here in face, the PCE. Adios. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.